What you are about to see is an episode of Comedy After Dark. This was a TV show that aired in Connecticut, 1992 to 1994, and starred high school friends. There was no high definition then. We shot the show on VHS tape. The old tapes broke down over time, leaving some episodes with poor video quality. Hello and welcome to show number 56. I wanted to take a moment out here to explain something and at the time it would have been it would have made more sense than if you're watching it today in the year 2016. You know the year where we have something called Facebook which did not exist back then so if you said Facebook we'd look at you like what? Or Twitter? I mean if we were to speak the way we speak today to ourselves, when the show was going on, I would be looking at myself going, first of all, like, oh my god, what the hell happened to you? But then I'd be like, what are you talking about? I don't even understand this language. Internet? Cell? Smartphone? A, f a, a, a phone is smart? What? An app? What the hell's an app? Twitter? What? Instagram? Facebook? What in the hell are you talking about? It'd be like a whole nother language. It'd be my 17-year-old self's head would explode. Anyways, that's not what this is about. That's not why I am here right now talking to you. I'm here talking to you because I wanted to express my undying love for you that I have deep, deep, deep inside. I mean, like, so deep that I don't even really feel it. I'm just saying it. But I... I, 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 see, I can't even do it. I can't even say it because I don't feel it. I wanted to take this moment out because back when you saw the show, way back then, what we did in this episode would make total sense. But if you watch it today, it won't make any sense at all because you're going to see me falling all over the character of Amy Fisher who is based on a real person named Amy Fisher who shot a woman in the head with the intent of killing her. So you would think if you watch this episode now go, why is Mike praising this girl who almost murdered someone who actually shot a woman in the head? Here's the thing. Back then, the media turned Amy Fisher into a media darling. They nicknamed her the Long Island Lolita. Not the Long Island Shooter or uh, the Crazy Nut Job. No, because she was pretty and, uh, and uh, young. And she was part of something bigger than just shooting a guy's wife. She was having an affair with, with him and with another guy. And this, all this was going on. And she just went in to bring her car in to get worked on. And then it turned out she had an affair. And then, oh, I mean, it was this whole thing. It was constantly in the news, constantly on the entertainment shows like Entertainment Tonight. And I don't even know if Access Hollywood was out yet. But shows like that, a hard copy and uh, Inside Edition. And then the networks got in on it. And they all made their own TV movie of the week. You had ABC, and I think ABC's version may have had Drew Barrymore, and, and Alyssa Milano, and she was like CBS's version, and NBC, uh, they had, uh, I believe her name was Noelle Parker, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. She was actually in the movie Ernest Goes to Jail, or Goes to Prison, or whatever it was, and she looked the most like Amy Fisher, a lot prettier, but, you know, in any case... Why did we have to have three movies about the same thing? Well, because we had to have Amy Fisher's viewpoint. And we had to have uh, the Buttafuoco's viewpoint. And we had to have the media's viewpoint. It was a true circus. It was insane. So we had been wanting to do it on the show. We didn't really know how to approach it. And we decided that we wanted to find someone who had a resemblance to Amy Fisher so that we could do our own Amy Fisher story. And we would really prop it up and make fun of the media 
and how it was portrayed in a different way by just being ridiculous. And that was really my intention. So you'll see me fall all over Amy Fisher. Like, I'm like taken into her spell. And then you'll see it, a contrast of it when I play Leona Hemsley and the opposite happens. And we also didn't believe Joey Buttafuoco's story that he was innocent, so we made fun of him a lot. Then you might wonder, why did we make fun of Mary Jo Buttafuoco? She was innocent. She was a victim. Problem is, is yes, she was, and we all had sympathy for her in the beginning. But then she became part of the media problem. She was all over the interview show. She's writing books. She's doing this. She's getting behind Joey Buttafuoco, who was clearly an asshole, clearly a shitbag, and she's defending him, and we're all like, we, we just can't take her serious anymore, and she's part of this, you know, the media and all that, as I said, and so she became a target as well, because she put herself there. I wouldn't do that kind of thing now as an adult, but back then, I recognized how absurd the entire thing was. And so that's what we do in this episode. And you'll probably notice it, but if unless you were around then, or if you are watching this today and you're not, you're not even aware of the Amy Fisher story, by the way, look it up. See if you could find footage of it and see what I'm talking about. Look, how, look at the movies. Look how they all came out around the same time. You'll see how ridiculous it was. And really, at the end of the day, it was tragic because a woman got shot in the head by her husband's teenage lover. Underaged teenage lover. So, there you go. Right now I'm listening and you probably hear it. You hear that? Yeah, that's my neighbor. The dog gets thrown outside and just barks. Barks and barks and barks and barks and barks. And then barks some more and then barks and barks and barks and barks. They never shut it up. And I go insane. I go, go insane. It, it drives me crazy to the point I actually go on my roof and I just start barking. I'm up on my roof going... <laughs> okay. I have to get into the zone now because it's irritating me. So, here it is. Enjoy. Episode number 56. Connecticut. It's comedy after dark. Story. Mike. Welcome to the uh, show, Comedy After Dark. Well, would you care for a Pepsi? I tell you, this, I, can you, did you hear about this? They found syringes in Pepsi, and all over the place too. And I did, I found one too and used it. Uh, see, the thing is, this is a new campaign. It's not really people inserting them. It's a new campaign for something they're trying. They're going to now use Pepsi in the syringes so you can inject it into yourself instead of drinking it. And it, it's much better than the cans. When you're hot, who wants to, you know, ah. you know drink the can? Shut up. <laughs> you. It figures, you. I always got to talk to you. Yeah, she's if fine. I need to. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. It's a little quiet in here, but that's because half the cast didn't show up today. They won't be here again. Uh, what did you hear about this other thing? Quail, Dan Quail, former vice president, got his own library. And what, what's in this library? They show his old speeches, some of his pictures and the thing. And the things that uh, he's done. But they also have, and this is what I like, and I, I think I want to go there to see this. In the west wing of the library, they had the actual sandbox he used while he was in the White House. Uh -huh. The actual sandbox he played in while he was in the White House is right there. So it all works out. <laughs> oh, joy, oh, rupture. We also have the big movie, and, well, I haven't seen it yet and don't know if I want to, Jurassic Park. Yeah, yes! I, some of you have seen it, I guess. Maybe a few of you, and yeah. maybe yep. like 80,000 million people saw it, if that sounded right out. Everyone know. but you. That's true. Aww. As Dave Letterman says, they're mechanical dinosaurs, that's it, little toys. But anyways, everyone's making a big deal about this thing. You see, this movie, right, is about what, big hideous creatures that go and park and, park and kill someone, right? Why not name it Central Park? 
There you go, that would work. Well, I think it's time for me to go because I see people actually sleeping and crying because they can't stand me. We'll be back after this. seeing this red light blinking inside the camera. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Rudolph, he's watching us. <laughs> Actually, I can see people, I can see people in there right now. Those families, those families in their houses, what? Those families in their houses watching us right now. So we got a good show today, I hope. Uh, we. We don't trip. No, it's okay. Okay. Well, one of our cast members... Ca Is that working? <laughs> so many problems today. I'm going to have a headache by the time this day's over. One of our cast members... One of our cast members, uh, and this is probably why I seem a little strange today, uh, John Landolfi left... <laughs> left the show. Uh, he officially resigned last night, and... It is sad because he has helped me out a lot with the show. He was half creator of it. I came to him and I said, hey, John, let's do a show. And there was, of course, a lot of other details involved, but it worked out. And for and family, I don't think we would have made it that far. <laughs> uh, made it that far. And we may have lost our band because, well, they still haven't called. And <laughs> we're filming now. But we have two new great actresses, so I'm proud of them. I think they're great, and I hope they stay with us. <laughs> begin to cry right now. <laughs> You're experiencing yeah. technical yeah. difficulties. Stay. Please stand by. Okay, there we go. All right. We're experiencing oh, yeah. technical okay. difficulties. Okay, well, we got a new set. What do you think, huh? Falls <laughs> apart on command. Yes. I love that. <laughs> oh, let's, yeah, let's slide that camera. That's good. Keep the camera. <laughs> but anyway, we uh, lost the cast member. And uh, we will manage without him, I guess. It's a whole new game here. New people, new attitudes. I got a new attitude! New toupee. <laughs> you like it? Yeah! <laughs> and today I thought, because it is very hot outside, I mean, it is like 9,000 degrees out, I thought no I'd wear way. this cool shirt. <laughs> I thought this, I'd wear this cool shirt. But I, I'm not a big baseball fan, so that's, I'm just wearing it to the you know, you know, just to the Yeah, we know! Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. Oh. I'm so tempted to quit right now. I'm gonna leave. That's it, I quit now. How you doing, Lawrence? I'm fine, Mike. How are you? You know, I like this. I actually can stay over here yeah. without having to go. So, how are you doing, Lawrence? You know what's cool, too? Yeah, it's good. You know what's cool? I like doing this. <laughs> I don't want to tell you where that hit me. I don't, I don't want to know. Can I have it back Nothing now? Kept. Excuse me, I have to draw attention. I think that's just some awesome. You see, there's, there's, see you people don't realize why the desk is so big. You see, for most talk show, if you notice, basically the whole... Can you shut up for a moment? The whole time you see me on the camera, I'm right here. There's a the little... Phone. <laughs> Did you find my mic yet? Come on, get with it. There. It looks like a little nose, you know. Oh, just give it to me. I don't want that after it's been on your face. In other places. Oh, Jesus. I don't want to know. You know, I have had just about enough of you. I have truly had enough. You have made me sick. Uh-oh. This won't go back on. I'm sorry. It's broken. What? Where's that mic cord? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mike. So you were saying. You were saying. What? 
Thanks again. So, Lawrence, how was your week? My week was good, Mike. Thanks. How was yours? <laughs> it was fine. That's good. Don't you have a joke to make about the um, Red Park? About what? Junior Park. About what? Park. Jurassic Park? Ah, blow it out, Jurassic. Don't go and spread lies like that, you know, because it just... That rhymes. I know. It was funny. I laughed. I cried. Did you? Yeah, because my son was good. That's good. Get on with it. Come on. Because 20 bucks could buy two buy in this damn light. It works, too. I, I look nicer. The, the things that broke, No close-ups. The things that broke. I'm going to shove this microphone up your ass. Mike! <laughs> the things that broke. Is that my spotlight? Hey, Is that my spotlight? That, that yeah. broke. Oh, fine. I wasted all my money. <laughs> but, uh, Lawrence, what? we have to do something. What do we we have are to do? going to do something new. Uh -huh. We're going to make up on the spot a good and bad list. Right here. Right now. Are you ready? Because this is going to be something different. If it's funny, I hope it is. If it isn't, we'll try our best. You ready? Yeah. These are about Pepsi. Good things and bad things about Pepsi. You know how they, yeah, they change and stuff. So, are you ready to go? Yep. A good thing. Good thing. Tastes great. Bad thing. When you taste it, you hurt your mouth. Uh, no. no, no. Try hey, to it, it takes me hours to write that. Let me see. Tastes great? Painstaking. Hurts. Uh, uh, Needles go in your mouth. Get stuck. Got one of our good cast members. Well, he, he's gone now. We're gonna yeah. get on without him. But I thought the best thing to do, and if you want, you could turn up the volume on that and hook up things. I'm going to. Uh, uh. <laughs> I'm going to have uh, it's sort of like a tribute for a thank you thing for all the work he's done. Yeah. And helping out the show. And then we got a great show. We've got Sharon Stone here today. <laughs> We have a new weekend news. Jessica Hawkins will be taking over. And she's got some great interviews with Amy Fisher. Uh, <laughs> and Go Amy! <laughs> and we just the show today. I don't know what's on it because I am just out of it. I've been working on this set on it. I haven't had time to go through it. And usually I'd be funny. Make them come to tell them. Oh. <laughs> usually I'd be funny. I wish you, John, the best of luck. I wish you, thank you. I wish you the best of luck in life, John. Bye, John. Bye. Bye, John. 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 Bye, John.
I mean, this was a great picnic. I love being out here in the wonderful wilderness of the city. Isn't it so nice? And it's even better with soda motor oil clear. Clear, no more of those unnatural impurities. Yes, wonderful, great for the young urban professional. Soda motor oil clear is made out of gas. Mmm, mm, that's so good. Oh, honey, can that's I That's right. Some? The gasoline makes up this delicious there you go. taste. Not only can you put it in your car, but you can drink it also. Mm. It comes out your mouth. Oh, it is I wonderful! Found, I found nails! Oh, wow! Now we can build our house! Look! It even comes with nails! That's right. Pepsi may have the syringe, but soda motor oil has nails. Cheers! Soda motor oil. Clear. Gasoline version. Now everywhere. That store is near you. It's so good! Buy some and enjoy it. For her first appearance right here on Comedy After Dark. This is exciting. She was in Basic Instinct and she was in many other movies. Total Recall. I enjoyed all the movies too. I'm a big fan. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome. Remember, you must move yeah, down I, when I guess. I, Last I, week, stupid. I had a kind of, hey guys, you glad to be here. What are you That's me trying to choke Ladies, Hey, gentlemen, here she is, the one, the only, Sharon Stone. Basically, to wrap it up, are seductive. Yes. Did I say that right? Did I say that? Yes. Okay, I, I don't speak too good with anything, actually. I just, wow, you make fun of my... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is hearing to me. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> ah, screw it. Now, basic instinct two, you took it all off. And I mean all of it. That's uh, right. Maybe a vacant plant. Yeah, I'm just, just kidding. He's a real hunter. Okay. And as everything comes off in these movies, I'm totally proud of my body, and I hope all of you are, too. Now, <laughs> I think I think we are a little bit too. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> you have a way with guys. You just kind of rip them to shreds. Do you think so? Oh, yeah. Watching these, come on, how can you watch this movie? Well, I mean... I don't know if you've seen it, if you've been in it, when you're with it. But how could you, I mean, you guys are watching this movie like this. Just like that. Is that what, do you like doing stuff like that? It's who I am, I can tell you. Well, I will say this, you are truly more seductive than we go. Thank you. Okay. Now, I do try. Madonna is someone to me who is much less tasteful in her work. And I try to be. And you don't use any makeup, and no. that's incredible. Madonna uses a lot of makeup. She's used it on the years, as a matter of fact. Now, in this movie, you and Michael Douglas uh, had, you know, did you? Sex. Yes. Did you actually? Uh, or, I always wondered about that. Well, Mike Burke, what do you think? <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Anybody got some water here? Give me a faint. Well, there's a faint away. It ain't working. Um, you got any new movies coming out? Oh, I'm not at this point. Right now, I'm working on my own life, my real life. And are you Actually, like, are you like this in your own life? I... No, my life is much more wild. Shocking. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> well, I gotta say, I'm a big fan. Yeah, but um, Police Academy Three, I think you were in that. Now Amazing. you were a little bit heavy in that. What? They made me put on the weight. I didn't want to. Well, it's, it was kind of strange that you seen it. And I bet, I'm sorry about that. Uh, just don't answer. Just pick it up and hang it up. What am I? I'm sorry about this. <laughs> See, they all leave it when they do that, you know. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yes. A lot of people that don't realize this, but you were in a commercial for Sprite. You were the lady who ran on top of the train, and when you came in, the guy goes, 
you hey, you came back and you go, yeah, can I be drink this Sprite? You were in that commercial. Exactly. I just actually was supposed to want the Sprite, not the man. Except in real life, but I really wanted the man. Yeah, because he was pretty chunky and ugly. See, I want every man. Mm -hmm. You want Lawrence? <laughs> He's available. <laughs> Excuse me. Would you stop ringing? I'm sorry about that. Lawrence ran away. <laughs> You're all in my room right now. Uh, yeah. No, it's just me and you. Yes. It is. It's uh, well, you you watch this. Would show. you like me to fade out? It can't be done in that kind of You actually took the power. Off. But uh, do you like the show? Oh, yes, it? it's very nice. Um, I've seen it a few times, and I was very impressed with you guys. Mm -hmm. I think you need a good woman like me on it. Well, believe me, uh, we, yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. Hi, Lawrence. Hi. Lawrence. Yes. Now, um, you, st have you noticed there's a, uh, I, there's a, there's no smoking sign over there. What are you going to do? Charge me with smoking? <laughs> Uh, okay, well, I'll let you smoke. You are the goddess of love. Vanna White isn't. That's the best movie sucked. Yes. Howard the Duck, too. What if that is probably, and I hope I don't offend anyone, but that, that is the stupidest, most corniest, most horniest movie I have ever seen in my life. You agree, right, Howard the Duck? I do. I agree. Um, Howard the Duck was one of the stupidest movies. The guy, or the duck, was screwing around with women, and they're human. Wait, well, she was in Howard the Duck? No, I just then think it's a we, stupid movie. Why are we talking about Because that? most most talk to hosts ask them the same question. Oh. I thought I'd be different. Okay. There you go. Yes. And set like new standards for the 90s. Yes. Exactly. I am the man of the 90s. Of course, I'm only two, but we'll deal with that another time. Um. Yes, I interrupt you, Alex. Uh. Oh, I just lost my turn. Oh, yeah. Would you ever... I do. I'd like to see it sometime. <laughs> That's the end of the show today, because I think we have... We, yes, well, anything well, else you'd like to talk about before we leave? Actually, I must be going out of date, actually, but I'd like to see you again, and I'll be back on the show, I'm sure. Ah, very good. When you, the next time you come, can you bring some ice and cocoa water? Sure. Maybe some ice. Ice is very good. Deep. Sharon Stone, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Thank you. Well, we've got some skits coming out, so up, out, went in, whatever. So they'll be here. Mike's and going for a cold shower. <laughs> I have to take a shower right now, very cold and chilly. And then uh, I'll roll around in some ice, maybe go in my freezer, whatever, cool myself down the best way. Drink some Pepsi. <laughs> I'm just going to kill that joke, right? We'll see you later. Okay. TV, babe. Music videos. MTV Sports. I don't want to see Cindy Crawford. I don't want to see DJs. I want to see Mike. 24 hours a day. Mike TV. Dude, I don't think you hear me. You're not listening, babe. I don't think I'm listening to you. Am I getting through to you? Get on the door of your brain and no one's answering. Be get me, homeboy. I'm coming to you. I'm saying Mike TV and I'm coming at you and you're not listening. I'm saying Mike TV and you're saying I'm a lazy housewife who sits all day eating bonbons watching all my children. I'm saying to you, open the door and let me in and you're saying screw you, you filthy punk. I'm saying give me a cigarette and you're saying show it up your rosy red ass. But I'm saying Mike TV and you're saying no one's home. I'm coming at you, you're answering the door, you let me in and you're saying Mike TV. You've seen him on the comedy hour, but now... He has his own amusement park. It's Moronland! Yay! Yay! Moronland! 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 Like things such as hit the moron! Yay! Yay! Hit the moron! <laughs> <laughs>
and insult the moron. Moron, you, you suck your You're nose. a moron! Nobody, Nobody knows. You have no show! You, you have no, have no, no life! What is this? Wait, hold on. You drool all over yourself. You suck so bad. Look at you. You are so ugly. 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 started the show. So I've been talking about it ever since, and as you know, I love Amy Fisher. Right. Yep. I almost bought her book yesterday. After yep. I saw it cost 30 bucks, I said, okay, we'll just keep money in the wall. 22 bucks. We'll just keep that money in the wallet. But here she is, and I'm very happy to have her here. Because I don't care if she shot Mary Jo. Mary Jo's a bitch. And Joey bought a fuck... I didn't do... Ladies and gentlemen, here she is. The one I love. Amy Fisher. I love this girl, I swear. Now, I don't even know where to start. For a year now, this has been going on. We've had, we had the stories and the movies, three movies. All different stories. We had Mary Jo's version, Joey's version, your version, I like your version. My version. Now, I want you to explain to us what this jerk did to you and why. Well, it all started that day at the garage. 
And I knew he had the hat for me. I knew it because he just those looks and and then we had a thing going and he wanted me to kill his wife because she was a bitch. Ah, oh, you heard it here first. He said he it's proven he did want her in her, her to kill her. did it, but he helped me. Did he helped you? Mm-hmm. Something new. Now, this wasn't in, in the story or anything. What well, happened? he didn't help me physically. He helped me emotionally. Now, I gotta ask you a question, because quite frankly, you were, I think at the time, you were 16. And this guy was 40-something. Mm -hmm. He's 40 years old, his hair's turning gray, and he's big and fat. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> I can't believe Lawrence did this. I, it was an accident, you know? <laughs> He actually threw something at me and I'm bleeding. Is it bad? Don't worry about it, you're fine. I'll leave it. Let's get this on camera. Let's don't get the whole full close up. I'm sorry about that. I'm just kidding. I'm bleeding. I don't want this guy. I see half our cast left now. Now, have you seen it? Well, I sent you copies of the show in prison because I wanted you to have, you know, have something to do. What do you think of it? It's nice. Yeah, you like it? Yeah. Now, you are <laughs> you're going to be doing your own story right here on the show, mm -hmm. and you get to star in it. Now, I know your parole officer is here. She's standing right there at Sharon Stone. And, uh, <laughs> and so you have, to, you have to be under supervision and stuff, but I want you to, with your yeah. what do you think of Mary Jo? Bitch, you I don't even want to talk about her. She's such an asshole. And how could she still believe that he wasn't on, he was on her side and he wasn't on my side. She's such an airhead. I just want to, oh, this gets me so mad. I know. And, you know, she's, <laughs> just how she goes out in public here with that phony accent. <laughs> Saying that you shot her, I mean. I know. Sure, you shot her in the head and almost killed her. And could so have ended what? Her life God. And she would Go on with it. Life. But, you know, you know, she's a bitch. She deserved it, right? She deserved it. And do you deserve to be in jail for it? No. You want to be out? Yeah. I'm going to get you out of jail. I am going to find a way to really? get you out of jail. Yes. What do you say we run off to Rio or something like that, huh? That'd be nice. Yes. Now, another thing, well, this is the big thing about you. You, you screw a lot of guys. I mean, you can't live without it. Has that changed for you now that you've been in prison and you've had to deal with big mamas? Big hairy mamas, too. Right? <laughs> well... You know, I try to keep my legs shut. Mr. Burke, <laughs> we got a phone call for Miss Fisher. Should we hold it? She's getting a phone call. Is it phone? Um, Joe. Got a phone call? <laughs> you didn't give me a lot. Don't of go. Do not go. Remember, this guy. He's bad news. All right, I have another phone call from a Henry for a Miss Fisher. Keep the men's calls down. I think we're gonna have the phone ring. <laughs> Sorry, I'm used to when I first saw the story, and I was watching this thing, I was like, how could someone so attractive just go out and shoot someone? And at the time, I thought Mary Jo actually got killed. And I thought, you know, Love that would have wasted of someone, someone attractive to be put in jail for the rest of her life and sweat in there and become big and heavy and have big mamas feel around. <laughs> but, ah, you're working out fine, though, for yeah. instance. You got That's all right. three, yeah, these movies, and I almost bought your book yesterday. I gotta ask you. Why is it so expensive? Because I need money. <laughs> per, uh, parole or something? Parole money or whatever? That was just, that, oh my god, I, I could have bought that book. It was a nice picture too, by the way, but it was just too expensive. Well, you know, Joe, I've been in jail, no time to work. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's, uh, too Mr. busy. Burke? That's, that's Mr. Burke? <laughs> yeah. We have ten more phone calls for Miss Fisher. Tell him, I, what do you... What do you think of today? 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 Because, I mean, you haven't been outside. Or at least I've been, you know, I get out a little. Been hot and yeah. sweaty. And it's hot slip today. Slip through those jail cells. Mm. Bars. <laughs> See her right there? Yeah. Doesn't she eat steak as a pain in the ass? <laughs> Mr. Burke? <laughs> we got another 25 more phone calls for Miss Fisher. Now, um, 
I want you to come back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will. I want you to marry me, be my wife. But don't kill anybody for me, because I'll try not to. Just kill Ingrid. That's All right. the lady who mm -hmm. wants to come. Let's try. Yeah. So uh, I'll see you later. And we got the Amy Fisher story coming up today, so mm -hmm. you want to show a clip of that right now? Sure. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's a clip from her movie, The Amy Fisher Story, coming up to Dark Version. It's right now. What are you doing? You're late. Late for what? Look, I told you I had a plan here to talk about, huh? What? Amy, I want you, and I told you this earlier, I want you to kill Mary Jo. Yeah, how could we go on doing what we're doing with her there? Well, you know, I'm gonna get in trouble for this. And how are you gonna get in trouble? Old daddy gonna bring you again for a new car? Fucking... Pink. Pink, little pink stripes on the side. Fine, where's my gun? Alright, look. I'm gonna tell you, alright, there's this guy. Name? I better, I better not say his name. But the guy has some guns. I'm gonna give you his address, I want you to go over there and I want you to shoot him. Shoot her in the head, no one kills her. Then run out of there quickly so no one catches you. And we'll say someone else did it. And then, you know, they'll never find out who did it. And if you play it carefully, put gloves on and stuff, you know, and don't let her see who you are. You understand what I'm saying? Am I gonna get in trouble for this? I don't think so. Look at this. Is this stomach lie? Because of you, I gained all this weight here. Alright, Kelly. Alright, you wanna do it? Yeah. Alright, Miami, alright. Go out there and conquer the world. Great. That was good. Oh. Woo! Mr. Woo! Yes. We got another 200 calls for Miss Fisher. Mm -hmm. Call the paramedics. I think my brain is moving. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kill you, Lawrence. It was an accident! I hope those are job offers. <laughs> well, you got a job here. And I will help you get out of jail. I want to thank you for being here. story now. We have a lot to do today. We'll see you later. What do we have? Weekend News coming up? Yes. Our new host, Jessica Hawkins. Yes. She's going to change Weekend News forever. They have to say it. Nikki, get over here. What? Did you get a call from MCI? MCI? Yeah, about the friends and family deal. What? Yeah, I did. Yeah, um, said Lawrence gave him our number. That little... That little... Oh, I'm gonna rip his head off. Oh, my God. I wonder how many of our other friends that he gave out Lawrence, to the Lawrence, Lawrence, have you heard... Uh, did you give our numbers to the MCI? No, but they just called me recently. They said that you gave me. Well, they, they said you, you gave it. Him. I, I never even talked where's to him. Where's Mike? I, I don't even belong to him. Where's Mike? Oh, uh, where's Mike? Where's your family plan? Mike, where are you? Get your butt over here! We'll call your friends, and then your friends, and then their friends. Mike, get up! And then you can talk to everybody all across. Mike, get over here! We can talk to you. I didn't say they were talking to you. I did not. Mike, you give them the number. You gave them our number. No, I didn't give you. They gave me. They gave you my number. What? Yeah. No. They said that they were. They came over to my house. With a gun, put it to my head and threaten to shoot me. They came they called this, me at like one They gave me a knife to right. my throat. No, I mean, you know they what they called they, me? Late. They stabbed you in the head. They stabbed me in the head with a big white thing. It just flew out from nowhere. He just oh stuck my. right there, and it was just sticking out my MCI. Head. Oh god! I tell you, don't go with this MCI. They killed my family. I How did they I find my number? It. I don't have any more friends. I know what MCI is. It's mafia. It's mafia. That's what I'm and 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 friends and CIA. Friends and family, my ass. More like their friends and their families and then their Must families. Be. Friends. Oh Fuck with my wife. God. Let's get him, guys. Uh, what wife? My third one. And MCI I could not believe this. Family I know. They I wonder how many other people they said we gave you, that we gave them. And they call you. And now it's weekend news with your anchor person, Jessica Hawkins. And Over this position for John Landolph, who did leave us. 
last night, and it's a very sad thing. We had our tribute to him just a little while ago. And um, now I'm happy to say that I have gotten the job. Mike Burke, uh, our uh, producer of this show, has given me the job, and I'm very excited about this. Yay! I wish you the Thank best you. of luck. Thanks. And this chair. <laughs> anyway, for our first guest on Weekend News and our first news of the day is Amy Fisher. We have her on today, and we have some new news about her. Yeah! Amy's got a gun! Hi, Amy Fisher. How exactly did you get this job? How did I get this job? I think I should be asking questions on it. Now, we've got, from a good source of ours, information about you in prison. And, um, now, you've been reported to your parole officer as a uh, unwomanly conduct in the in the cell. Oh, I had to do it. What what I exactly just... did you do? You well, wanna tell us? There was this girl and I kinda became more than friends with her. Can you explain exactly what you mean by that? I had to do it. Look, when you don't do it for such a long time as I didn't do it. You just have to. I won't. With anything. <laughs> or anybody. Now, can you tell us this woman's name? Um, no. Is she a friend of yours for a long time while you've been in the uh, jail cell? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you describe her to us? <sighs> oh, she's big. Very big. Um, massive. Massive? Um, black. She's a black woman? She's a black woman. Now, it could it be that she reported this to the parole officer because you are a white girl and you've had such a history of uh, violence in your sexuality with uh, Mr. Buttafuoco and his wife? Um, I don't know why she reported me. She just did. Did, I guess did you? It wasn't um, good for her. It wasn't good for her? Mm -hmm. Did you, re did you encourage her? her? Did you encourage her to have sex with you or? Was this a, a joint thing that you both wanted to do? She wanted it bad. She did? Mm-hmm. Did she I want it more it. than you did? Mm-hmm. Have you had any other sex with any other of the fellow inmates at the prison? No. This is the first time, the only one. Mm -hmm. I feel really bad for you, Amy Fisher, because, you know, you it was your first time, and you just seem to get caught with I everything know, you with do. everything. Exactly. It's not... ...story on in this? Excuse me, Miss. It's not my fault. Miss Fisher, we got a phone call for you on line one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We'll ask what they want. All right. Um, they say they have a job offer. Oh, see ya. Oh, well, that was Amy Fisher, and um. I guess she took off because she has a job offer um, from some men. And um, I'm not really quite sure where she went to. Um, hold on, please. Slightly interrupted. All right, we've just got a news that um, Amy Fisher will be back later. She had to leave for a moment, but um, she will be back. Not right now, though. <laughs> And um, now we do have Steven Seagal to come on with a new news story of some upcoming movies. Woo! Hi. Good, how are you? I'll tell you something, I've been watching your show, you're doing a great job here, and I really think it's the goal, but... Good, I'm glad. Um, now we have you on the news. We'd like to talk about some of your movies. Um, not that I'm really familiar with any of them, but, you know. It's okay. I don't need to watch more movies either. You I don't? Just, I just feel me let it go. All right, there is one that I did see called Out of Justice. Now, did you like doing that movie? I don't know if I can remember what the movie was. Yeah, I think so. Are you drunk? No, it's, uh, I'm, from, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. And, uh, You're stupid. Yes, exactly. Okay. I was just wondering. I wasn't really sure. What, what about um, Under Siege? Is that a new movie? Um, yes, that, uh, that was my last movie. And what I did in this movie was uh, I played a cook who was undercover. Yeah. As an agent, I get the bad guys on the ship. 
Now, I got a new movie coming out right here right now. I'm going to have to do it called Under Siege 2, where I dress up like a maid. Oh, really? A female maid. I put on a dress and everything. And then uh, I open the door and I go, room service. Guy opens up. Hey, I don't want no friggin' room service. I say, room service. I don't want no friggin' room service. I open the door and I go, I'm the maid. I need to have my shit to go. Oh, the whole wow. movie's like, I don't like when people clap at me or laugh at me. If you're gonna keep clapping, I'm gonna have to waste you. You understand what I'm saying? Thanks, sir. Let's My hands it. are bigger than your forehead, your face, and your whole body. I can just crush you like that. Will you please shut up? Thanks, sir. Let's just go. Look, anyway, um, that was one of our stage hands on. I appreciate it. Can we just like talk now? Let's just talk. Can you tell us when this movie is coming up on our show? As a matter of fact, um, I think it's today. To uh, oh, I don't really? Know, it could be today or yes. next week. Well, you know, my, my, uh, the people that work with me, they don't really keep me updated on these things. So. Yeah, you're, you, you could be a quite right. Idiots. You, won't be, you don't need them. Look, Actually, know, they're not idiots. I know. Could I just demonstrate a discussion with my martial arts? Can you come on? Oh, here? um, I'm, I'm not, not going to. Sure I'm just going to kind of. the guy who's trying to impress the girl and he has to be the hero and then she's oh 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 thank you I look what you did oh and I don't think that's right you know you got someone like Archie Bunker and Edith Bunker whatever her name is they're married but look at their relationship it sucks oh Archie hey Archie how you doing today and then you know Archie Bunker and hey 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 are you doing impressions Mr. Seville yeah Stephen I didn't know you did such impressions you see, people think I'm just this guy who just sits here and not changes his voice and sounds like Dylan McKay from 90210, but seriously, no, I do, uh, I can't do voices. That's good. What do I say about that? Calm down, Mr. Seagull, it's okay. It's just, you just have to understand that that's the way the show is run. One of the things we run on funny business and some funny people, and that's why we're all happy all the time. We know that you're not, but... Sorry about that. Hey, Mr. Seagal, have you ever had a fight with the guy who plays Kane on Kung Fu, The Legend Continues? I don't think he knows who the hell that is. I don't. Look, I only watch my stuff 
I only do my stuff. I don't care about Bruce Lee or any of those guys, okay? Don't Bruce care. Lee could beat you up. And he's dead. <laughs> See, Dad? Um, I'm not sure. Um, no, he's just he's just an ethnic. Right, anyways, what were we talking about before we... I think we are talking about your wife. Oh, my wife, yeah. You see, you always got the hair, so I love my wife. And one of the things is never to lie to her. If you think she's ugly, tell her. Why go, hey? Do you think your wife is ugly? Of course not, no. No, she, she hasn't gained any weight yet, but I make sure that I teach her the, the arts and stuff. Man. Does she beat the crap out of you sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she does. She does. She goes, Stephen, Stephen, you friggin' se seagull. That's another thing, too. When I was a kid, they were everyone always called me Seagull. So that, hey, Steven Seagull. Hey, Steven the Se Seagull. You know, I was like, I didn't like that. I'm sure that really upset you when you were a child. It did. I was just, it was just, that was the last time I cried. Really? Um, two years old. It must be really devastating for a child to grow up I like I don't you. have air tear ducts, so I can't cry. Oh. I don't want to lose any of I know I'm tired of all the people out because my voice is kind of boring, so I think I ought to leave. Okay, well, it's been really nice having you. Okay. Okay, well, I want to thank you for having me here. I enjoyed it, and good luck to you. Okay, good luck to you, too. Bye. Bye. Now it's Steven Seagal, everyone. Phone call, yes, yes, from Leona Helms, who's just been let out of jail, and um, <laughs> I think she'll be on our show now, maybe. Hello. Oh yes, she'll be on our show through um, through the phone lines. Um, hello, Leona, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, well, hi. I'm just gonna say this right away. I'm a 73 year old woman, and I can't take this. So don't ask me any of those painstaking questions. Okay, we won't. Um, but I would just like to ask you this. What, do you have anything to tell us about your side or, or uh, what you're going to be doing now? Yep. Excuse me, I don't mean to cut in, but... Shut up! I ain't going back! I eat that crap! It's disgusting! No, but we... No, we can um, buy you time until you get on the show. Amy Fisher is ready to go back on. Okay. I'll come back. Amy Fisher is now back on our show. Hi, thanks for coming back. Did you get any of those jobs? Yeah, I got all of them done. You got all of them yeah, done already? Fast worker. What kind of jobs were those exactly? Um, I don't think I should say on public television. Oh, were they uh, sexual jobs? Mm -hmm. no, no, no. Did you get paid a lot? Mm hmm. That's great. Um, you want me to tell you some of the phone numbers? Oh, no, thanks. Actually, I, um, I'm married and I have a husband and I don't, you know. Sure. That's what they all say. Well, see, no, I, I have um, moral respect for myself. I'm, I'm not so sure that you do. What are you trying to say? I'm not trying to say anything. I'm just stating the fact, ma'am. Excuse me? Excuse me? Are you saying that I have no moral values? Excuse yes, me? Yes, ma'am, exactly what I said. There's a phone call from Miss Fisher on line one. Can you please hold all right. me? All right. I just had about enough of you, all right? We're holding. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm just stating the facts. That I don't think that you have a lot of moral values, and I, I personally think you're a slut. Did you just call me a slut? No, I said I think you are a slut. Uh, Do excuse you me? To... Um, we have phone call line calls on line two, three, and four for Miss Fisher. Can you please tell them to hold? No. Don't tell them to hold. I'll be you're right there. Me. You're with me. You say it too, we here. What are you doing on that show? You spreading lights around again, you little bitch? Shut up. We have a Miss Gunn on line five for you. You got me. Oh, shut you up, you. Oh, guy. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Oh, oh, oh. Cut this off. Where oh. was I with you? Well, ma'am, I'm not trying to insult you. Or yeah, you. okay. I'm really not. I'm just um, wondering where you are in the world and where you think you're going. I'm just not too sure about that. I'm just living my life day by day. 
sex partner by sex partner. Mm-hmm. And you get paid for it. Mm-hmm. And good money. You're proud of this? Why not? I get good money. Are you afraid of diseases? Why should I be? Uh, excuse me, we have I'm a call invisible. Line. Especially we have a call in line seven from you from your agent. He says NBC is um wants to give you ten million dollars for the rights to your new movie. Alright, don't we sign need. it. Alright. <coughs> anyway, um would you like have you ever gotten pregnant? No. Not lately. Not lately? When was the last time you did get pregnant? Two weeks ago. Oh, and what did you do about that? Nothing. Got an abortion, like I always do. Always? And how many times was that? Mm. 20 or 30. Um, Amy, do you, do you ever want to grow up and have some kids and a family of your own? Mm. I haven't really thought of that. I don't think about anything. Oh. That's <laughs> good. Um, I'm glad. Um, I'm anyway. just happy to be here. You are? Mm -hmm. I'm glad it's you're fun. happy. It's fun to you. Mm -hmm. What else is fun to you? Do you do anything else in spare time for fun? Yeah. What? I get phone calls and go and get money. How do you get that money? Do the things they tell me to do. What kind of things are those? You know. No, I don't know. All kinds of things. You don't want to know. Can you tell us? Exactly, because we're a little slow around here in the sex field. Can you tell us, please? Just tell me your trick and I'll do it. Oh, good. Oh, we okay. say something. We say something, right? Look at you two. Look at me. I'm supposed to be a woman. You do it out greeting us like this. All I do is I keep my hair slick like this, I put a just lipstick on, and I spend all my time in jail. Look at it! You two are chatting about lipstick and crap like that. I go out with this guy, I go out outside, give it a rest. Who cares about TV Vision Story? Who cares? We're done with it. Teenage love Leone, Leone, whatever it is. Or I do. I do. Me too. Oh, well, what up with this crap? Miss Hemsley, um, you have to wait until you're... I'm not coming back out here! I just want to say, I don't want an interview with you! You're a pain in the ass! I don't want to hear any more about this damn evening story! I'm going back to jail until I get out soon! Goodbye! Goodbye, Leona. Oh, man. Well, now you know, many weird, weird things those. happen on weekend news. And now, we will have to say goodbye to Amy Fisher. Bye. Good luck in your jobs, and um, we hope to see you again. Well, Miss Fisher, you have uh, five visitors at the front gate. All right, I'll be right there. All right. Thank you. And since we don't have anything else planned right now, I don't think, um, we will be going. But um, we will be back for Weekend News 2 later on in the show. Thanks for staying with us, and we'll keep you updated on all the things that go on in the world. And remember, you heard it here first. Goodbye. <laughs> this meeting on um, the President of the United States, Bill Clinton. So a, a funny thing happened to me on my way here. I flew in from New York and boy, my arm's tied. Mr. Clinton! Mr. Yeah, Clinton! Yeah, well, just a moment. I, I, another funny thing happened. I was on a plane. And some guy was talking to a car phone. He goes, honey, guess what I'm talking on? The plane! <laughs> and then he goes, God, you're not going to believe him, Sarah. And he handed me the phone and goes, say something. I said, screw you. Yes, okay, you, you had a question. What do you think about gays in the military, and would you become a gay in the military if you had the opportunity to? And what do you think about the budget deficit? And how big is your penis? Any other questions? Yes. Okay. My opinion on gays in the military is, well, 
The people in this country are all equal. Everyone in this country should obey the rules and be equal. So if you go put a straight man on the front lines, then I think a gay guy should. I used to be gay. Hillary used to be a man. She had turned this stuff. A good looking one too, by the way. But you see, the thing is, my plan, my plan, as I like to call it, is to get gays in the military. It is as simple as that. It works, it's nice, and hell, well, let's see. They'll fight better because they won't be so horny. They'll have each other to screw around with. And rock and roll music. Well, I don't agree with censorship. I don't like it. If I could find a lady who made up censorship, I'd kill her. I'd it's put a, what? Excuse me, Mr. President? Yeah. It's your um, vice president's wife. Tipper Gore? <laughs> well, Tipper, you fired. The thing is, with censorship, it's sick. Now, I, could, I like censorship. I think it's important. Mr. Mr. Yeah, it's really important. Mr. President, how do you yeah. feel about those little, those little parental advisory stickers on tapes and albums? I agree with that. I'll explain why. But how can you agree I don't, with that and I don't then like, disagree with censorship? You see, I don't like those people like Too Loud Cruel, 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 whatever their name is, I don't really care. These, these idiots. Vince Campbell or whatever his name Vince is. Vince Neil. Vince Neil. He, uh, he's a sick puppy. I would not let my daughter date that son of a bitch. He's too old. Yeah. Not what, what are you? Shut up. Yeah. What are your plans to lower the budget deficit? And um, is Hillary a lesbian and running the country in order to get gays in the well, military? What happened to the old days when President Kennedy would come up here and someone ask? Excuse me, Mr. President, I see you got a cut on your finger. How'd that happen? Well, Chief Rivers, President, I yeah. see you have a cut on your head. How'd that happen? Well, you see, there was a conspiracy. There was, we're not exactly sure what happened, but I think there was a second gunman. I was sitting over, sitting down, eating bread. Do you like the diagrams? Well, we could deal with the diagrams at another time, but... What happened was I'm sitting at breakfast, and this white thing came and just nailed me right on the forehead. The stonest thing. I didn't even expect it. I expect it, but... What was that? Oh, I'm sorry. It's thundering out. It happened. Mr. Fred, isn't it true that you hired that gunman to shoot blanks at you just for publicity? Well, now, if I want publicity, I could just do this. Well, I'm from New York. It's Saturday night, but I don't want publicity. Yeah, if I wanted Saturday publicity, night. if I wanted publicity, I could say, I'm gay and proud of it. I'm a hippie and I did inhale. I don't want publicity, so... Mr. Yes. How do you feel about Wayne and Garth, the characters in Wayne's World? <laughs> Cute little fellas. Uh, I was watching the movie, and uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, Chelsea, she was really fond of it. Uh, Mr. Yeah, President, yeah. Mr. President um, what do you think about Sharon Stone? Well, I, And if you weren't married to Hillary... Well, you know, as a matter of fact, uh, I've been eating lunch with Sharon Stone lately, and yeah, she's great, yes. Uh, if I wasn't married to Hillary, I think I'd propose to Sharon Stone. Ah, uh, but not in heaven. Okay? Uh, but why not? I don't know why people are going to keep asking me these questions. Did you quit? Yes. Same quit person all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think this room's about empty. Mr. Clinton, but if you did it not, in fact, inhale, didn't you get tired of all your little hippie friends making fun of you? Let me say something right now. I don't have hippie friends. My friends stood for something they believed in. No war. Mr. Clinton. We don't need... Don't hold your horses over there. I'm in trouble, the man. We don't need war. It's all good. One of the things I like to preach about in my high school, or my preschool, whatever, which, which one, I, I don't know. The thing is, in this country, people think they can do whatever they want. Now, a lot of sick things go on. Oh, a little gas problem, but I'll deal with that. But I think it's important to... Just shut up. I think it's important to deal with the important issues. And, oh, I to put on deodorant today. The thing is to deal with the important issues in this country that are needed to be addressed. And if... If that's what has to be done, then that, that has to be done. And, uh, I'm sorry.
so. Uh, <coughs> but um, you couldn't have you been eating too much McDonald's food lately? I'm sorry, I've been I've been woofing down those uh, Big Macs. <laughs> I drank a lot of Pepsi's on my way here today. Mr. Clinton. Yes. How do you feel about the Smurfs and the Pepsi? What? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <coughs> what the hell are Smurfs? There are other blue Smurfs creatures. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. I'm in Solo Man. Go ahead and speak. Speak your mind out. Have fun. How do you feel about Superman being reborn as a half human, half cyborg? And what are your plans about redoing the arms race in order to better, better line the planets in order to create a better civilization? And how do you feel about hair dye? And what do you think about blue capes? What? And what do you think about black capes? Black capes? Hair dye? Um, something and something. Oh, Superman. I think it's wrong to have comic book characters being changed into something they're not. Why can't you keep with the traditional Superman? This guy, he does what he does. And I think that's right. But, Mr. Clinton. What? The original Superman was killed. Well, bring it back to life. Yeah. Mr. Clinton, do you wear hair and tie up here? It's not rude on you. Mr. Clinton, have you slept with your hair and tie up here? Mr. Clinton, have you slept with your hair and tie up here? Mr. Clinton, have you slept with your hair and tie up here? Mr. Clinton, have you slept with your hair and tie up here? Mr. Clinton, have you how you doing? Mr. Clinton, did Mr. you Clinton, sign my forehead you in your blood? Oh, how you doing? Hey. Mr. Clinton, is yeah. it true? Chelsea hey, how you doing? Hey. my wolves? Hey, bro, how you, hey, wait. hey, who said that? Who said that? Mr. Clinton, can I go? Uh, uh, I have to confirm that date tonight. All right, tell Hillary Clinton, I can't make it. Mr. Clinton, is it true? Chelsea butters uh, the line. Hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Chico, man, how you doing? <laughs> Mr. Clinton, Mr. Clinton, is it true that you inhaled uh, through your butt? Show number 56. I hope you enjoyed it. Wonderful show. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Good night. <laughs>